Yeah, back in 1989, uh, uh, about 12 mission agencies got together and decided that they could collaboratively do training better than they could independently. Various organizations provide missionaries that are serving here in Canada the opportunity to facilitate at our courses. And so there's lots of different people that fit into that um, rhythm. And so we have over 30 people that, uh, different people that help in that uh, depending on the time of year, etc. Ministry needs to flow out of a, a lifestyle of worship as opposed to going to do a job. If I focus on my relationship with God, staying connected to the vine, as you, to quote Jesus, um, then, then life flows through that to help us in ministry. And out of that, uh, uh, the posture of humility and weakness and how God uses weakness and our humility more than our strengths and our competencies. So that uh, the posture is really important. We see that coming out in Philippians chapter two with Jesus uh, and uh, his, his way that he lived, that he didn't even consider it himself equal to God, even though he was God, uh, mm -hmm. to paraphrase what is there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, debriefing, just uh, helping people work through spiritually losses Again, that weakness mm -hmm. component that God usually has humbled people in the process, and they really need a safe place to share some of those broken pieces that have happened in their lives. Some uh, out of out of error and human fragility, other of, out of God's great design to help us uh, not live in this fantasy that we are strong and can do it by ourselves. As we talk about grief and loss, both with the children and the adults, um, just that ability, you know, helping them be able to admit the, the, the difficult things mm -hmm. and, and invite God into their, their, the place that they're at. I think, you know, in humility, admitting that, yeah, this, this does hurt, this is difficult, and, and inviting Jesus into our story and knowing that his presence is with us, he's with us, he's writing the story he's helping us through those difficult things and you know i think that's what we we hope that our students can do with as with their children um uh, to be able to walk in humility you know and be honest with god i think uh because of uh, the history of missions too we battle against expectations right. and they often assume right away well you'll be the leader um, and so humility, I think, in this new generation of missions is saying, no, I, I don't have to be the leader. Um, you know, you've got a lot to bring to the table. I'll, I'll walk with you and give you suggestions. But, um, you know, some uh, often we've said, well, I'll start leading and then uh, I'll transition it to a national. But some people are, are jumping in the deep end and say, well, if we don't have a leader at the beginning, that's OK. We're not ready yet. Um, mm -hmm. And they they just start. Um, dreaming together and then uh, trying to not even take that uh, that first you know the as the bus illustration that sometimes using you, you don't don't take the seat as the driver of the bus you uh, right. sit in the in the in the bench and and ride along with people and yeah so one of the changes that we've made uh, we used to have a staying healthy overseas which was more about you know illnesses physical. and physical you know mm -hmm. health. And so we've seen the, the need for more of a mental health approach. And so we've, we've uh, developed lessons around mental health. And missionaries are experiencing this pressure um, and expectations and uh, a much bigger world than we used to. And so like Carolyn said, that mental health piece just becomes more critical and for children as well that uh, they are able to process and and go through uh, some valleys and some some serious situations. One of our core values at Mission Prep is change. Um, and so conversations with the local church are saying, uh, how can we make this you know more more usable for people in my my local church? Mm. So they're wanting to to realize, hey, you guys have got something there that we think could be helpful to the people in the pew. Um, and so and, and I think that's kind of been fostered because we've had other things happening in missions other than just, 
you know, raising all the money for a family to go. The diversity is just incredible. And we're heading into new territory with COVID as well. Now they're mixing their business model with their mission model because they want to make money from it in order not to have to raise money and be able to, to do that, but also still have a mission covering to do it. And so we call those BAMers. And then we have uh, PAMers is a new one, professionist missions. So you got BAMers, PAMers, and then you got retired people that are saying, hey, uh, I want to I go to Brazil and uh, help with accounting. And then we have the rebounders. Rebounders. Yeah, people totally. who have come from other countries to Canada and now have, feel called to go back to their country and mm. share good news. And so there's yeah. lots of different possibilities. Yeah, Dan, to go back to your question, there's just this integration where missions uh, locally and globally are all tripping over each other. Right. Um, uh, and so that's that's the new conversation that's taking place. You know, we're, we're looking at possibilities of online or, or a hybrid model for our training programs. Um, we want, we, yeah, we want to look at the positive things that, that COVID might be, be opening up for us in the future. And I think related to that is the whole aspect of how could mission prep be helpful to the world. Um, mm. um, we have had, it uh, was from Kenya, um, and took the material back with our permission to try to um, obviously change it, tweak it, use it to help Kenyans go to other countries. So they were kind of starting their own mini mission um, opportunities. So uh, that's another question is how could mission prep be um, helpful to other countries that are starting to act as senders? How can mission prep encourage local churches to encourage the next generation of missionaries? Mm -hmm. So we're looking at other other ways that we may need to broaden our sphere of influence at this time. Yeah. Mm -hmm.